morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad you wanted to join us tonight. Tonight, we're going to do a very, very short, brief review of what's going on in Virginia, where we are, and how you can help. And then we're going to move into organizing in your communities. A lot of people miss the huge organizing that went on in 2017 after he who shall not be named took office. Well, things now are more dire today in 2023 than they were in 2016. So it is time to get up off the couch, stop yelling at the TV, and let's go and find some friends who can work with us to save our democracy. So again, we will get started officially in about two minutes. We've got um, about maybe 40 more people we're expecting. So we'll give them a moment to arrive. We were chuckling a little earlier about early birds. Um, I opened the room at 7.23. I'm always terrified that somehow I might be late. So I opened the room ridiculously early and then Noelle joined me and she was like, oh my goodness, what an early bird. And I'm like, excuse me, you're right here with me. So we had a little fun with that. Very, very important thing to remember organizing in these times. It is very, very important that we care for ourselves and we care for each other. I see stuff happening in the chat. Go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat. Your name, where you're from, um, and if you are part of an organization. Uh, and if you want to name the tribal lands, that works too. We love that. All right, we'll give it another couple minutes and then we will get started. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, well, it is 8.05, you're here, I'm here. So let's get started with where we are in my favorite place, I guess, because I live here in Virginia. So welcome to the road to Richmond. Now, most people know that we love elections in Virginia. We love them so much that we have them every single year. And in 2023, we had our primary in June. So we know who all of our candidates are. On November 7th, the entire Virginia General Assembly will be up for election. Now, as I said, we love elections in Virginia. This election is going to be very special. Number one, all 140 seats are up. Number two, this is the very first time that people in Virginia are running in the new districts they got after the 2020 census. Remember, Virginia was late redistricting and we had elections in 2021. So in 2021, everybody ran in the old districts. Our federal elections were in 2022, people ran in the new districts. This is the first time our state election, they are running in a new district. So when we look at where we are in terms of the legislature, we have 40 seats in the Senate, 22 are Dem, 18 are GOP. In the House, we are down three seats, 47 Dem, 
51 GOP. Now, the new districts in Virginia, people are looking at that and they're going, oh my word. All right, 99 and a half percent of all those big red districts, nobody lives there. They're rural. All the blue districts, that, those are the major population centers in Virginia. So if you've ever watched them call a statewide election in Virginia, you might be looking at the map and that map is turning red and it's turning red, it's turning red, it's turning red. And all of a sudden, uh, Nova comes in, Fairfax County, Arlington, um, and Alexandria, and they call the race for the Democrat. People are like, what? It's like the big population centers are finally coming in. They're bigger, so they come in last. All right. Well, actually, the real information on this slide is kind of what redistricting looked like. 37 Republican seats, 31 Democratic seats, and 32 brand new districts where there was no incumbent. Whoever works the hardest, whoever works the smartest, whoever turns out their voters is going to win that district. All right, now, postcard addresses are available. And as many people know, we have partnered with National Women's Political Caucus, a 501c4 that endorses women. So we have our nonpartisan addresses with our nonpartisan scripts under Center for Common Ground and over on our C4 side for our people who want to be a little more partisan and want to be able to write XYZ as the endorsed candidate. We have addresses, about 75,000 are still available over on the C4 side. Phone banks are up and running both on the C3 side and the C4 side. Phone bank training has already started. I didn't update my slides. Training right now is Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday is Center for Common Ground. Wednesday through our partners at Bay Area Coalition, it is National Women's Political Caucus. It is the C4 side. I am not certain at this moment whether our weekend phone bank training will be Saturday or Sunday. So I kind of jumped the gun on that one. Texting will start September 1. And we will be doing our first texting training. We will be using Outreach Circle on August 30th. I've got a slide and I will drop a link in the chat if anybody wants to sign up. Virginia has 45 days of early voting. Early voting begins on September 22nd. Remember the election is November 7th. We begin voting in September. Now, our phone banks, I mentioned that they are on Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, and they are on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can sign up at mobilize.us slash CFCG dash ROV. You can also sign up on our center for ground dot org slash phone bank site. Now, I don't expect you to be able to read this slide, but I want you to get a feeling. Now, remember, it's still August. These are the calls that have been made for the general election. We finished one of our phone banks literally in the middle of a national guided phone bank the other day, and we had to put people in another phone bank. So join our phone banks. They're fun. I love the national guided phone banks. I normally come at the very beginning, talk to people about what's going on in Virginia, what Virginia looks like. Texting training will begin on August 30th. And I will drop that link in the chat. You can sign up on Action Network. 
if you have texted with us before, we will invite you to text with us. We will probably text about 280 to 325,000 Virginia voters. We will be sending them early voting information. If they want information on election day or vote by mail, we will be providing that as well. Now, to volunteer with us, centerforcommonground.org slash postcarding, we do still have postcard address is available. If you want to make phone calls, centerforcommonground.org slash phone banks. And if you want to text with us, I'm going to actually give you the link to sign up for texting. So that is, oh, and then I have one more fun thing to show you. In Virginia, there is no single place where you can go to find all of the early voting locations in Virginia. The state only provides the elections offices and the office of the registrar. All the large counties have what we call satellite locations. Normally, the only way you can find satellite locations is you have to go to the county website and they will be listed there. What we are doing at Center for Common Ground is we have produced a map of all the early voting locations. And literally every day we have to go in and update that map because Counties are constantly updating. Are they going to have satellite locations? When are the satellite locations going to be open? And will they have Saturday voting? And will they have Sunday voting? And most counties have not announced their Saturday voting, especially our more rural counties. So what's going to happen by the beginning of September, we will get on the phone and we will start calling county registrars. When is your Saturday voting? What dates? What times will it be? And will you be having Sunday voting in your county? So that is what is going on in Virginia right now. Virginia is a happening place. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There we go. And now I am going to introduce uh, an organization that has become very, very dear friends of Center for Common Ground, uh, the work circle. And I'm going to introduce Noel D'Amico at the Worker Circle, who will walk you through or introduce you to the Democracy Circle concept. So Noel and the Worker Circle, take it away. Thank you so much, Andrea, and good evening, everybody. It is so wonderful to be with you and to get the opportunity to share this model called Democracy Circles with all of you. The Workers' Circle is a dear partner of the Center for Common Ground. We have been phone banking and postcarding and text banking with all of you, and we're so delighted because the work of the Center for Common Ground is strategic. It goes right to the people that most need need this information. And we know that every time we're making a call, every time we're placing a tax, every time we're sending a postcard, we're making a serious impact. And so what we keep thinking about is what can we bring to the Center for Common Ground? And the Worker Circle is a Jewish social justice organization. We were started over about 120 some years ago by Jewish immigrants that were fleeing autocracy and persecution in Eastern Europe. And they were looking for a place of freedom 
and democracy, where they could build a better and more beautiful world for all. And that was our founding as the worker circle. And it's what shapes our work on democracy and voting rights today. We have members across the country in almost all 50 states. And those members are looking for ways to connect with one another, connect in their communities, stay connected to the work for voting rights and democracy. And in the process of our direct actions for democracy, our thinking about legislative advocacy, and especially our partnership with the Center for Common Ground, we developed a model called Democracy Circles, which are essentially a way to structure ongoing small group involvement in the kinds of phone banking activities and other activities that you're doing with the Center for Common Ground and supplement, contextualize them with additional resources that help you understand what are some of those voter suppression laws that we're looking at? What are some of the factors that are creating this situation of terrible barriers that people of color in particular have to surmount? How can we connect with others for direct action action and protest and opportunities like that, well, democracy circles are a way. And so without further ado, I want to introduce you to Noah Barron, our social justice organizer, who's going to step us through what democracy circles are. And we hope you'll just dive in and ask lots of questions in the chat. I'll be in the chat responding there. And at the end, we'll have plenty of time for Q&A. So thank you so much. And I hand it over, Noah Barron. Aaron, take it away. Thanks, Noelle. And thanks, everyone, for having me here tonight. Um, as Noelle stated, we love the Center for Common Ground, um, and I'm very pleased to be working with you all. Uh, my name is Noah Barron, and I'm the social justice organizer at the Workers Circle. And I actually want to start off this evening, this presentation, with a question. And I'm going to ask that you put your answers in the chat. Um, I'm sure our, our PowerPoint will be working in just a moment. But yeah, sorry, time. folks. <laughs> no worries. It's, it's Wi-Fi issues, the world we live in. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the question aloud, and it's also going to be in the chat for anyone who wants to read it. So when it comes to taking action, are you someone who is more likely to get going and learn while you act? Or are you someone who wants to think and learn about an issue and then take action afterwards? Um, so think about yourself for a moment and the way you like to engage in social justice work. Um, and, and put your answer in the chat. And the question is also on the screen now, I believe. Noelle likes to take action first and then reflect. Learn first, then take action. I'm seeing from Joyce. Learn first, okay. We're having a, a learn first is winning so far. Uh, but we have some, some votes for take action first, not a voting. Uh, these are all good answers. Um, keep putting your answers in the chat and uh, we're going to we're going to touch on this more in our presentation. So the good thing is democracy circles are well, they're, they're circles. They're a model where it doesn't matter where you start. You can build power and you can build community by starting with action or by starting with learning together. So what is a democracy circle? A democracy circle is a small group of people who join together regularly to demand the democracy we need, a truly multiracial, multicultural democracy that represents all of us. Each democracy circle is initiated by a circle convener who picks a meeting time and place and brings together people they know in person or on Zoom to take action and to explore how we counter attacks on our democracy right now. We provide all the resources and training. You bring your passion and your people. Democracy circles build grassroots power by gathering and equipping people that you're already connected with. This is an adaptable model that can take the form you need and meet in a way that makes sense around a kitchen table, in a church basement, after a protest, on a Zoom, or in a coffee shop. Democracy circles are an entry point for people who want to do something about the loss of our rights and the erosion of our democracy. So the idea for democracy circles grew out of the real needs of the people in our activist community. In January, 2022, a group of worker circle members, including myself, engaged in nonviolent civil disobedience in Washington, DC. And on the train back from that protest, a few of our college network students, Noelle and myself were having a discussion and we were wondering what would it really take 
for people to engage in meaningful strategic action on an ongoing basis. And it was Murley, who was an NYU student at the time, who brought up the point that activism can often feel really overwhelming and lonely. People want to feel like they have a community and know that when they act, they're doing so in a way that is truly impactful. And so thus the idea for democracy circles were born. Democracy circles are a way to keep people connected, build community and act together. Um, so we're going to put another question in the chat now, um, keep you on your toes. Um, when working for change, is it easier for you to get started or to sustain the work? Again, no wrong answers here. Um, but which one comes easier to you, getting off the ground or keeping the work going? Get started, getting off the ground, sustaining the work. I'm seeing mostly getting off the ground, but some sustaining the work. Both, <laughs> both can be trouble, can be hard. Um, or maybe both can be easy, I don't know, reverse. Keep putting your answers in the chat, get started, sustain. Okay, I'm seeing mostly getting started. Let's think, keep putting your answers in the chat, folks. But the good news is that democracy circles tackle both. They help you get started and we provide an ongoing structure, resources and support to help your circle continue and connect to others. Democracy circles give you support and show you step-by-step step how you can create change together. They also serve as a guide during this time of rising fascism in our country, while providing a space to deepen your understanding about voting rights and democracy. So what do democracy circles do together? There are two main elements of a democracy circle, action and reflection. So let's talk about the action part. Democracy circles take action in all kinds of ways. Some circles postcard or join weekly phone banks with us in the Center for Common Ground. Others recruit their friends and their neighbors to become nonpartisan poll monitors or to join direct action visit and make legislative visits. We provide a take action guide with a variety of actions you can take. The second half is reflection. We also provide discussion resources to help you and your democracy circle reflect and think together about the state of our nation. Some of the discussion resources are articles you can read together. Some are videos you can watch. Some are poetry you can discuss, and some encourage you to share your own stories. We really wanted to level the playing field with democracy circles. Some people have gathered groups for years and other people have never put together a gathering. But don't worry, there's no prior experience necessary to start a democracy circle because we provide you with everything you need. So we provide you with a getting started guide, an outreach tips guide, take action resources and discussion resources, and we provide support all along the way. So let's take a little dive into these resources. The first is the Getting Started Guide. The Getting Started Guide will let you know what a democracy circle convener does to start and sustain a circle. We provide some suggestions for how to organize your time at your gathering and information for how to reach us for support. The Outreach Tips Guide can help you get people to join your democracy circle. Perhaps you're a longtime postcarder with the Center for Common Ground, but you've been postcarding alone and you're not quite sure how to reach out to others. Our Getting Started Guide and our outreach tips help you connect with others in your community online or in person. We also know that it often takes many attempts to gather people, even when they're interested. And so we have some advice on when and how to persist. So let's take a moment to really think together about outreach. Many of us, gather with people every day. Let's take a second to think about who you could invite to your democracy circle and what is, or what established group that you're a part of that might or that already exists that might become a democracy circle. So in the chat, drop the name of at least one person or a group that you would invite. They could be your basketball team, alumni from your high school or college, members of your family, your walking buddies. They could be friends from the senior center, or other people. When you're ready, drop their first name or the group that you're thinking of into the chat. Book club, it's a great one. Tree of Life Church in Roanoke, totally. Three sisters, individual democracy activists, 
members of the UU Society of Amherst. I'm loving all these answers. Some of these are groups, right? Some of these are people. The group that gathers with their dogs in the park. I love that. Um, because, you know, these are people you used to maybe see all the time and you maybe even talk politics, but, um, you know, you're not really taking action yet together. And this is one way to mobilize them. These are all great answers and keep thinking of yours, everyone, because we all have somebody that we could, you know, tag along and invite to our democracy circle. So what does a convener do? Let's take a moment and think about that. A convener? Uh, picks the time, meeting time and place and gathers people they know together. But democracy circle conveners don't have to be huge leaders in their community. Conveners can just be regular people. It's okay if you get nervous speaking in front of a crowd or if you've never organized something before because we'll help you every single step of the way. And you're also always allowed to co-convene with someone else. So you might be wondering what exactly does a convener do? So we're gonna lay it out for you here. A convener reaches out to people they know and invites them to join their democracy circle. They set a time and place of gathering for action or reflection or for action and reflection. And they decide what they're gonna do at their first gathering. And then the convener is the point person with which I and our team at the worker circle will coordinate. So we'll provide updated resources via email. We'll check in with you and see how it's going. That's really the role of the convener. And the last thing is the conveners often have periodically gather online on Zoom from all over the country to share what group tips and what's working with each other. So now that we know a little bit about the role of the convener, let's jump right back into our resources. In addition to our getting started guide and our outreach tips guide, we also provide take action resources that give you specific actions that you can take to help fight for our democracy. And this is just a screenshot of part of the page of our take action resources. It's, it's a, basically a menu of options. We have all sorts of things on there from letter to the editor, to post starting, to making a legislative visit like you see here um, to other activities. We also provide discussion resources that you can use to help guide your conversations. So say you're part of a Center for Common Ground Democracy Center, which already has plans for action and education. Our discussion resources could be your small group element during an established program, or you can use them to build continuity and community in between larger events. When you sign up to convene a circle, you and I set up a time to talk by phone and I'll walk you through everything. So you're not alone in this journey. We will think together about what your circle can look like and I'll hear your ideas and your hopes for what your circle can do. What we found is that people want to take action with others in ways that are strategic, but they also want to learn. Many of us were not taught civics in school, or we were taught civics in a way that made us objects rather than agents of our democracy. If you stop somebody on the street and ask them, what is the filibuster? If you're lucky, Noelle told me that someone older than me might remember the old Frank Capra movie, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington with Jimmy Stewart and say, hey, isn't that when a, a lawmaker keeps talking and talking and doesn't sit down for a noble cause? A random person on the street likely won't know the long racist history of the filibuster or how it blocked the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Act from passing last year. So we have an article on the filibuster with a set of discussion questions. We provide resources from trusted organizations like the Brennan Center and journalists like Ari Berman and credible media organizations that are short enough to read together and provide a framework for understanding why the heck in 2023, we are still fighting to make sure black voters can access the ballot. These resources and discussion questions provide deeper context for dedicated postcard writers and phone bankers or door knockers who are already in motion together from Virginia Beach to Monroe, North Carolina to Savannah, Georgia. And they draw the people who won't act until they have a better sense of what's going on into the work. The resources are also living examples that can be used if you're preaching a sermon or leading a Bible study. And these resources also work on college campuses where students are anxious to connect the loss of voting rights with the loss of abortion rights and other issues. Our resources help people connect the dots. So we have almost two dozen resources for you to explore. This isn't even all of them folks listed here. And we are constantly updating them and adding more. 
Each resource comes with a set of questions to help you guide your conversation. And the resources are sorted by category. So like one category is how democracy works now. Then we have timely articles on legislation, court decisions, political strategy, and public debates. Then we have history, arts and culture, and your stories. For example, our resources include a poem by Nikki Giovanni, an examination of the latest Brennan Center voting laws roundup, an article that explains how federal courts work, and questions that invite you to share how your own cultural background inspired you in the fight for voting rights and democracy. Democracy circles are flexible and adaptable. Now I'm gonna share with you four models for what a democracy circle can look like. A congregational model, a kitchen table model, an into the streets model, and an organizer's model. Each of these examples comes from one of our real democracy circles, and you can also create your own model. So let's start with the congregational model. Nancy's justice committee at her synagogue wanted to get more involved in fighting for our democracy. They gathered 11 people on Zoom and together they read an article about how the anti-abortion movement eroded our democracy. Then they discussed the article using the questions we provided. Her dresses committee was already writing postcards with the Center for Common Ground. Our democracy circle model provided context and background information, allowing them to deepen their understanding about the issues they care about. If you're organizing faith leaders to in turn get their congregants to participate in phone banking or postcarding, democracy circles give you a ready to go structure that you can give these leaders so they can organize circles in their congregation. And while Nancy's Justice Committee used it to jumpstart their congregation-wide programming and action, you can also use it to catalyze small groups in homes or in your congregation. By the way, this model also works for unions, inside senior centers, or for other organizations that gather regularly and have a constituency. The next model is the kitchen table model. Susan and Barry gathered two friends from their area before the Georgia runoff. Together as a democracy circle, they wrote over 200 postcards to Georgia voters with the Center for Common Ground and the Worker Circle. Forming a democracy circle helped them create a safe and welcoming space while they wrote their postcards. Our next model is the into the streets model. Diana invited five people in her democracy circle to protest in her area in Northern California. Afterwards, they met together to share stories and reflect over coffee. And then our final model is the organizer model. For those of you who are already organizing town halls, ongoing campaigns, and other larger scale ongoing efforts, democracy circles can be used as a way to keep people engaged between meetings and develop new leaders as well. For example, you can organize multiple circles inside congregations or unions or within your organization's membership. Our resources help deepen and contextualize your work, giving democracy organizers additional tools. And these are just examples. You'll be able to develop your own models because the democracy circles are designed to be adaptable. Um, I'm gonna now share a quote from Dr. Rodney Sadler, who is the Associate Professor of Bible and the Director of the Center for Social Justice and Reconciliation at Union Presbyterian Seminary in Charlotte, North Carolina. He shared with us his thoughts about democracy circles. Dr. Sadler says, look, we're all busy, but democracy circles are a way for busy people to get active. You can fit it in your schedule. You're at home yelling at your TV. Here's a better way. We're reminding people who think that the system should work better. Yes, it should work better and they're part of the solution. Importantly, democracy circles use the power of us, of we the people. When Moses was exhausted organizing the people, God appointed Aaron, and when that wasn't enough, 70 people were brought in to help. Jesus didn't go out there on his own. He called disciples and told them to go out two by two to involve more people in the movement for God's justice. People of faith, congregations of faith, faith leaders, I'm speaking to you now. Take a look at this model as a way to transform not only our communities, but our nation. These are powerful words from Dr. Rodney Sadler. So Andrea, can you, can you jump in here and tell us a little bit about the democracy circles that are already being formed by Center for Common Ground folks? 
Well, the first one we actually did in Virginia Beach. We were having a democracy town hall for Deep had, and the format was a discussion, and there were members of the congregation. It was a really, really, really hot day, so everybody wanted to stay home. So people were gathering online. The speakers, we were all in the church. Most of the people participating were online, and the questions that people were asking about democracy, about voting. And then there was this conversation that began, why haven't we done this before? There's so much that's going on and, and we don't understand why, we don't understand how, and most importantly, we don't really understand what we can do about it. Out of that one meeting, or more came from it with the other pastors who were part of the meeting saying, wait a minute, uh, we, we need to do this in my church. And um, one pastor wasn't able to make it, but he heard about it and saw part of it on Facebook said, we definitely have to do that at my church. So it becomes its own self-sustaining kind of thing. And so as we go in and do future democracy circle town halls, we will bring with us the advocacy alerts that we have where when we're talking about the struggles that young people have voting, well, there's legislation that's been written to address that. When we talk about what is going on in Virginia with the governor now saying, you know what, I'm not going to automatically restore uh, voting rights to anybody. I'm going to really study on it and come up with my own program. Well, there is a solution for that, and it's federal. And when we really look at all these attacks on voting rights as part of our democracy, we have to understand there is a fundamental flaw in the way that we started this country and wrote our constitution. The original people who could vote were in the day the 1% of Americans, the rich white men. So thank you. I mean, I just love thinking about it. It was such a great experience. Thanks, Andrea, for sharing. And, and I think democracy circles are a way we can, we can take America back from the 1% and make it an America of, of us, the people. Um, so I wanna share one more quote from one of our democracy circle conveners from California. Um, would you mind going to the next slide? Sorry about that. Um, democracy circles allow us to share our ideas and feelings with other activists, be heard and hear others, get and give support and have agency, not feel as helpless as we might in the face of rising fascism in this country. If you're interested in starting a democracy circle, you can learn more and sign up at the link we're gonna put in the chat or you can email me directly at nbarron at circle.org. And I will also put my email in the chat. Um, so now we're gonna open it up for Q&A. So go ahead and, and drop your questions into the chat um, and I will answer them. We also will read the questions aloud so everyone can, can read them. So um, yeah, feel free to put your questions in the chat. Noel, were there any questions throughout um, the presentation as well? 
I did not see any, but what I wanted to say is how excited I was when I saw folks putting in who they'd reach out to. And I want to lift it up a bit more because we truncated that a bit for time to make sure we had enough time. But you've mentioned book clubs, the Tree of Life Church in Roanoke, playgroup parents, um, invite re sisters, individual democracy activists, you, you, the vote, members of the UU Society of Amherst. You use are really in the house here. We've got the Stanford, Connecticut Women on Watch, the group that gathers with their dogs in the park. I have to say how much I love that one. The Voting Rights Group of Central Synagogue Neighborhood. You're hearing that it's both people in your community, people who are already organized in groups and beyond, and it keeps going. Friends from end hate across our state. What's beautiful about that is that has a statewide reach, right? And remember, your democracy circles can be on Zoom, so they don't all have to be in person. So it might make sense in that group if you've got interest from people across the state that you hold your democracy circle on Zoom, or you find other ways to connect. Temple Sinai Circle, strengthen our democracy. Wonderful, and the Alliance of Moral Progressives. And I see Alice has put in some of the big name organizations that might wanna pick up this model as well. This is an exciting model, friends, to see how it, trans it gets transformed once it's in your hands. I'm seeing um, the, that Andrea loves the alumni groups and yeah, to connect groups. Janice, I see you are saying, you know, we can use this to connect groups one to each other. Um, and I believe Susan, you're asking, can we have access to your slides? Yes, you're gonna get the slides in follow-up, I, I believe. Um, am I right, Josie? Yes, all the links that were shared tonight are recording and the slides will be sent in a follow-up email tomorrow that's great that's great um let's see i'm not seeing any other questions i'm wondering if maybe we we have some ideas from all of you like gee, uh, well 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 uh noel we do have a question oh, if do. there is already a you you the vote chapter can we use democracy circle resources to enhance that and the answer is yes. That's it. The resources are meant to be an enhancement to any group that you already have. And Center for Common Ground, we are going to be working on the voting rights, where we were, how we got here, and what is our solution? How do we get out of the problem? So again, we'll take people through and all the way up to, we need a real constitutional right to vote. If voting were truly a right for everyone, then that would mean we have a right to not do it. In so many states, if you don't vote as often as someone thinks you should, they can kick you off the voting rolls for not voting. Right, right. Most people believe that once they register to vote, if they don't move, then they're going to be, remain registered to vote. And that is just unfortunately not true. Why should being convicted of a felony prevent you from voting. Some states just say while you're in prison, then you have states like Iowa, Virginia, Kentucky, Florida kind of changed it, and then they kind of slid backwards. Um, if you commit a felony, you don't lose your citizenship and you don't get younger. So why are you losing your ability to vote? When you get out of prison and you get a job, you don't get to say, oh darn, um, I've been convicted of felony, I can't vote, therefore I'm not going to pay taxes. It doesn't work that way. 
Absolutely. Alice, we're going to go to you in just a moment. I want to pick up the first question in the chat, which is, hey, um, if I don't want to start one of these democracy circles, can I join one? Well, we're, we're kind of hoping you'll reconsider and start one because we're trying to get it off the ground. But we do have some going across the country, and we are happy to connect you to ongoing democracy circles. Just a note on this. These democracy circles are intended to be small groups. So you might find, oh, wow, your democracy circle's going like gangbusters. All of a sudden, you got 14 people. Well, that might be time to spin it off. You know, you get to 10 people, spin it off, and they bring in more. Spin it off, and they bring in more. One of the things about small groups is that when you have many, 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 many small groups, it's like interlocking chain mail. You, you know the knights that used to ride of old, and they had the little mail and it's these tiny circles and one of the reasons for that is that's what makes it strong and so you know if if something happens to one circle there's still 40 more going you know what i mean there's still 4000 more going so that's the idea but we would be more than happy to try to connect you with existing circles that are already out there just write to noah at nbaron at circle.org and noah will connect you up. I'm going to go over to Alice and then we'll go back into the chat. Thank you very much, Noel. Um, I, just two quick points. One, I talked with uh, the organizer for uh, Common Cause and he was, he advocated that we work at the state level for the next six months or so because he doesn't see Congress moving anywhere on the freedom to vote. And to follow up on that, there's two groups. One is called the ACLU People Power. And the second one, which has small groups across the country already in place. And the second group is, um, is my idea that to take the League of Women Voters, the ACLU, Worker Circle, all the huge support that common, uh, the Center for Common Ground has, and organize Freedom Riders for Voting Rights to the 23 states who have passed suppressive voting rights legislation since uh, 2013, since Shelby County, and really concentrate and educate the voters in those states who really don't know what's been happening. And I, I have a lot of information about this. I, I have a map and stuff on our uh, website, and I'm really anxious to get to the 18 to 35 year olds to let them understand that they're not voting and they're doing the Bernie Sanders, what I call syndrome, which was, I don't like who's voting, so, who's running, so I'm not gonna vote for anybody because they don't actually educate, they haven't educated themselves on the issue, is what we have to attack. And I think we have to begin at the state level. I've taken too much time, but I'm very, uh, National Voter Corps is, really wants to go after this group. Alice, we love your passion. You always come with fantastic ideas and your commitment is undeniable. Thank you so much. I want to kick this over to Noah though, because you know, democracy circles have been bubbling with young people as well. You saw in some of our slides, these are young people gathering too. So this isn't just for people who are above the age of 40 or something. Noah, how, how is this living on college campuses or with the younger gen? Yeah, we have democracy circles um, active at several universities across the country um, with folks who are young and, and excited about fighting for our democracy. Um, and I think I think it's interesting because a lot of folks are like, oh, young people don't vote, but the young people we see are actually super energized and super, um, we, are, we have called our campaign Demanding Democracy, Fighting Fascism. And young people really see that what's happening as rising fascism, I think, um, and are eager to fight it and fight for a future. Um, so I think it's been really interesting to see young people take up this model. And we hope in this coming year to see even more young democracy circles grow across the country. I'm seeing a question in the chat uh, from Joan about mailing costs. And I think, um, Andrea, maybe I'll kick that over to you. It says mailing costs have really grown so much that some retired individuals can't afford to write and send many cards and letters. What are some sources for funds that have been successful? Well, what a number of our 
large faith partners have done, the Religious Action Center on Reform Judaism, and I know you, you, the vote did it for a while, and my own church, United Church of Christ, did it. They actually provided little mini grants to buy postcards and the postage if people were willing to do the writing. So if you are part of a larger faith group, um, one of those that I mentioned, and they have a social justice component. They may already be working with us and it may be possible for you to get them to send you a packet. Right now, we generally don't have funds to buy postage for people, but it's something that we are looking looking at for 2024, because we know even more people are going to want to send postcards. And you are right, postage prices have almost doubled. It's insane. Yeah. Mail delivery has gotten worse, but the cost to send a letter has gone up. It's true. It's true. Um, Noah, any thoughts from listening to the conversation, things you might want to add in about our resources, about conveners, about the models? I just wanted to lift up actually a message that was put in the chat that I really, that I love to read a lot. It, it brought me a lot of uh, excitement and hope. Um, this was from Audrey Muck, who said, I have an activist group that's just exhausted after so many years fighting bad legislation, but experiencing few wins, and I'm hoping this model might breathe some new life into the group. Um, and I think our model has worked in, in that in that capacity where it's um, brought folks and kind of uplifted them and and also shown them kind of the larger structure and and given them the bigger picture of what's happening in our country right now. Because um, so, you know sometimes when you're just in the grains of sending the postcards, it can be overwhelming. But when you're reading the the resources and and learning at the same time, um, it's really easy to to see kind of the bigger picture of this fight that we're in. I think also some of the resources like the poetry, for example, and, and these kinds of artistic resources we're gonna continue to, to add more and more to, they work on us, right? They're this ways that, that art, that music, that poetry, help re-energize us, give us different languages to express our deepest values and our deepest commitments. And when we can tap that, we find this wellspring of energy comes up, other points of connection with other people. And we leave because we know we're part of a community that cares, that cares for one another, that cares deeply about our world, and that is engaged in learning and acting in strategic ways to make a difference. To, let's see. Um, I'm not seeing other questions in the chat right now. So let's see if there's any, any closing thoughts that people have or Andrea will we'll send it back to you. If there are no closing thoughts, I had a closing thought. Many of you know that Center for Common Ground has democracy centers. And I know a number of our democracy centers have reached out to NOAA, very, very excited about this gives us a new means of connecting with the community in a different way. For everybody who missed that initial wave of organizing in 2017. This is, in my mind, the beginning of the second wave, where when we look at where we are now and look back on 2017, things have gotten a lot worse now. And that means we're going to need to be strategic we are going to need to put on that chain mail, form those circles so that we will be successful 
in turning this around and getting the country that we really and truly want, a country that expresses the values of the many rather than the values of a few. So, yes. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, everybody. And we want to hear from you. We want to be in touch with you. If you're like, mm, I'm kind of on the fence about this, that's fine. Be on the fence. Let it ruminate. But then reach out. We're happy to talk it through with you. Noah is expert in pinpointing resources and, and be, uh, is a great conversationalist to bounce ideas off of. You're going to think of your own models and ways to adapt this. And together with the Center for Common Ground, we know that we can get our country headed in a, in a much better direction. And we're so happy to have been with you tonight and to be partners with you in that. So thank you. Well, thank you, Noel. And in closing, I am going to say I am delighted that you brought Noah with you because I love that we are beginning to really see our movement take on leaders that are very young, that we are preparing that next generation to be able to take over and say, we understand where the previous generation went wrong. We have seen their mistakes. We have been part of the self-correct. We know our history. We understand our history. So we are not doomed to repeat it. So with that, Noah, I am always delighted whenever you join us. It is always so fun, so energetic. Noel absolutely loves seeing you. I love our partnership with the Worker Circle. And to all the marvelous people who joined us tonight to hear about Democracy Circles and to talk about what you're doing and going, oh, maybe that little idea in your mind is spinning. We can incorporate this and this might give us that ability to reach out and bring in people that have just been hanging around the fringes because they can dip their toe in the water. Good luck. I really, really, really hope that we all are able to implement this in some way. And yes, you will receive everyone who's signed up. And we know a lot of people know the tricks. Sign up even if you can't come, because then you get the notes and the recording. You will be getting the notes and the recording. So everybody, have a wonderful evening. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you all. Good night.